In Times Like These, with John Kilpatrick. Hello, I'm Pastor John Kilpatrick, the pastor of the Brownsville Assembly of God Church within times like these. We're very happy tonight to be able to come back into your home with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you can tell, tonight's program is a little bit different. This week's program and next week's program is going to be a little bit different because last Sunday, May the 23rd, I had in our sanctuary a true man of God from Romania. I had Brother Dimitri Dudeman from Romania that God had sent there and exiled from that country to America with a message from God for our errant country. And you know, folks, I don't think there's any good way to say this. I'm just going to come out and have to say it bluntly the way that I believe it. You know, it's one thing to be a sweet little pastor and nice little pastor and just not ruffle nobody's feathers and just come before people week after week and, you know, feed them and help them and all that. But God has called me to be more than a pastor. And he's called we men of God to be more than just shepherds to shepherd people. He's called us to be watchmen on the wall and to look out and to see when danger is approaching and to see when ominous clouds of judgment are gathering. And I want to say to you tonight, from the depth of my heart that my heart is concerned as a man of God not necessarily just as a preacher or pastor but as a man of God as a watchman on the wall I see clearly that the clouds the ominous dark clouds are stacking up and gathering for the United States of America and I know many of you might be tempted right now to flip that channel and you want to go on to something else but I want you to hear me for a few moments I want you to stay tuned to this program tonight for many different reasons. Number one is because I want you to hear this Romanian preach the gospel. Now in this program tonight, he's going to share his testimony about how God even sent angels to minister to him. You might say, well, Brother Kilpatrick, I don't believe that. Well, if you do away with angels and ministering spirits, you're just going to have to throw your Bible out in the trash can, set it on fire, and get rid of it, because it's full of it, both Old Testament and New Testament. You see, one of the things that disturbs me today is people have somehow they've taken the authority on themselves to go through the Bible with a fine-tooth comb and comb out the things they don't want and throw it out and keep the things they do want. But I tell you, we are commanded by God to accept the whole counsel of God. This is God's Word. And I can't find for the life of me where miracles have ceased. I can't find where healings have ceased and where God visits His people with dreams and visions and angelic visitations. You don't pray to angels. You know, you don't worship angels. But God does send His ministering spirits, and the Bible says that His, His angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation. And here's a man that was tortured, Brother Dimitri Dudeman, in Romanian prisons before Ceausescu was killed, and that iron curtain fell. Here's a man that was being tortured for the cause of Christ and smuggling Bibles into Russia and into Romania and Albania and other places over there in, in Europe. And as he was tortured beaten with clubs like a caveman's club with spikes driven through him and, and his fingers slammed into a door and where they stuck out on the other side they'd stick reeds under his fingernails and a man that was had electric probes put in his ears and all over his head and a hood and he was sitting in an electric chair and, and he was electrocuted to the point that he had passed out and fallen his face in a pool of blood and he did that twice and God delivered him and he told me at the dinner table last Sunday, he said, not long after that I had to get dentures because I woke up one night and the electricity had so shocked my system till it killed the roots in my teeth and all my teeth fell out over a two or three night period. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night spitting my teeth out. Now when a man goes through something like that, my brother, when a man goes through that kind of torture, you can't tell me that God, if, that, if God has his hand on that man, you can't tell me that God's not going to send ministering spirits to minister to him. You see, one of the things in America why we don't believe things like that anymore is because we have, we have a comfort zone that Christians live in, and we're not persecuted, and we can't believe that God would do such things for people. But I tell you, everybody wants to see Leo the lion get locked jaw, but nobody wants to go in the lion's den. Everybody wants to see the three Hebrew children come forth from the fiery furnace with not even the smell of smoke on their clothes, but nobody wants to go in the flames. When God's people are put in a situation to where they have to suffer and are persecuted and they are suffering for the cause of Christ, God will go to whatever extent is necessary to minister to them and to preserve them 
to keep the message alive. Well, God delivered him from a Romanian prison and brought him to America. God even told him the day, the month of the day, the day of the month and the hour that he was going to be exiled from Romania and kicked out. And that God was going to send him to America. And he wound up in America and California. And the angel of the Lord even visited him there and gave him some messages for America. Now, the man that you're going to see tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a man that is an humble man. A man that is non-pretentious, has nothing to lose, nothing to gain. He's just a man of God. When you see him, you'll see that. He's not looking for riches. He's not looking for big offerings. He's not a money preacher. He's not a big televangelist. He's just a simple man that went through hellish torture for the cause of Christ. And God laid his hand on him and sent him to this country with a message. And I tell you what, I had him at my church and I'm proud that I did. And my, my church received him so well. And the Spirit of God moved in our church services as we sat morning and that night and listened to him as the Spirit of God moved and people were moved and people began to realize that some of the things they think they suffer called persecution. They're not going through persecution at all after hearing this man. And, and we were made to realize that evening in the evening service how close the coming of Jesus Christ really is and how judgment clouds are looming Unless over America. There's a great turnaround and a repentance and a humbling. I don't know how much longer America can survive. May God help us to hear this man May God help us to hear the voice of the Spirit. These are crucial hours. Please stay tuned as you watch Demetri Dudeman. God bless you. Dar în ziua de astăzi să lăsăm toate la o parte. we must put everything aside. Să credem că ne-am întâlnit cu Hristos. And believe that we are here with Christ. Eu n-am să vorbesc basmi. You know, I will not tell you fairy tales. N-am să vorbesc povești. I won't tell you stories. Vorbesc pentru că Dumnezeu m-a scăpat pe mine. I'll only tell you God took me through. Și dacă voi avea timp. And if I'll have time. Voi vorbi și pe deapsa ce vine peste America. I will tell you about the wrath that is coming upon America. Dacă n-am să am timp. If I won't have time this morning. Pastorul am auzit că rămâneam și de seară. I heard the pastor that we were going to be here tonight. Voi completa de seară. So I'll finish what I won't say this morning this evening. Biserica aceasta no, cu I pray God bless this church with the Holy Spirit. Aș vrea ca să simțiți în ziua de azi cercetarea lui Dumnezeu. You know, if you've never felt, I hope you feel the Spirit of God. Și dacă până acum n-am cunoscut pe Dumnezeu. And if until now you haven't known God. N-am cunoscut puterea lui Dumnezeu. We haven't known the power of God fully. În ziua de azi vom cunoaște. Now is your time. Că Dumnezeu este foarte puternic. Because God is almighty. Și voi frați americani ați trăit într o binecuvântare nemaipomenită. And the Christians here in America have lived in so many blessings. Voi n-ați știut You know, you've never known what trouble was. You haven't known what torture is. You haven't known persecution. God has blessed you so much in this country. So that all the world may taste of your blessings. But the one mistake this country made is that it rejected God. The church of God. You know, I'm not talking about the world. But even those in the church. You know, God wants to wake up the church. De ce m-a pregătit pe mine în România? This is why he prepared me in Romania. M-a trecut prin atâtea torturi. He took me so many tortures. Și m-a dus în țara asta. And he brought me to your country. Ca să pot să stau în picioare. That I may stand up. Și să pot să vestesc Evanghelia. And speak the gospel. Și puterea lui Dumnezeu. And of the power of God. Eu m-am născut într-o familie de creștini. Well, I was born in a Christian family. Tata meu a fost pastor la o biserică pentecostală. My dad pastored a Pentecostal church. Frate, vreau să vă spun, nu știu ce e în biserica asta. Brothers, I want to tell you, I don't know what's in this church. But I feel like I got plugged in. Într-adevăr că aveți mult curent pe aici. Aveți multe becuri. You have a lot of lights, I know. Dar este un bec care vine peste unii oameni. But there's a current that comes over some people. Ca să poată să vorbească. And that's not, you know, electricity. Să nu se intimidează în fața poporului. And this helps me speak to you better. Vine farul lui Dumnezeu. You know, the light of God comes. Și el începe să vorbească. And he begins to speak. Tata meu a fost pastor la o biserică pentecostală. My father pastored the Pentecostal church. Așa după cum fiecare părinți ducem copiii la biserică. As every parent brings their child to church. Tata mă ducea și pe mine. My dad forced me to go to church also. Dar eu i-am spus tati. But I told him, dad. Tata, nu-mi place la biserică. I don't like church. 
Eu am să plec de acasă. I'm going to run away from home if you don't stop taking me. Așa cum pleacă mulți copii americani. As many American children do. Mai Dumitru nu te duci. He said Dumitru don't go. Dumitru se regret. Dumitru you will regret it. Tată, eu vreau să fac școala militară. But dad, I want to go into the navy. Mai dacă tu vrei, du-te, dar să ți pară rău. If you really want to then go, but you'll be sorry. Și m-am dus la școala militară din marină. And so I went into navy school. Am făcut patru ani jumate școala militară. I stayed for four and a half years. Am ieșit ofițer de marină. I became a naval officer. Mi-au dat 80 de oameni în primire. They gave me 80 new recruits. Bomba capi mare neagră. They shipped me out on the black sea. Mi-au dat ordin guvernul comunist. And the communist government ordered me. Să controlez vapoarele care vin din străinătate. To check the ships that came in from foreign countries. Răspuns Dumitru. And he said, Dumitri, Dacă ai să găsești Biblie, if you find Bibles, să confiști Biblie, să arestezi pe misionari, confiscate the Bibles and arrest the missionaries. Repede să te ambasezi. And then we will advance you quickly. Când am auzit că Dumitru trebuie să ajungă o mare, when I heard that Dumitri was able to advance, m-am apucat să controlez puternic vapoarea. I began to check the ships powerfully. Și într-o dimineață o vit un vas din Olanda. One morning a ship from Holland came in. Și am intrat cu opt oameni în control. And I went in with eight of my men. Și sub niște lăzi de biscuit. Under some crates of cookies. Am găsit o cantitate mare de biscuit. I found very many Bibles. Am chemat pe șeful vasului. I called the captain of the ship. Scatali Biblie. Are these your Bibles, sir? Zice nu. He said no. A zic nu știi. I said do you know who they are? Las că se știe tu. He said we'll find out together. Dar într-o parte era un bărbat. When I looked to one side there was a man. Plângea și se ruga lui Dumnezeu. He was crying. Am văzut că el se roagă. When I saw that he was praying. Zic că lui trebuie să fie Biblie. I thought the Bibles are his for sure. Mă duc la el, dăm pașaportul tău. I went to him and I asked, give me your passport, please. Spate pașaportul din buzunar. Took his passport of his pocket. Era un misionar din Olanda. He was a missionary. From Holland. His name was Brother Dick. He worked with Open Doors Mission. I asked him, Are these your Bibles, sir? He said, No. Whose are they then? They are your brothers and your sisters, he said. When he said this, I felt as though a knife went through my heart. But this was not enough. I began to hear a voice in my ear. What are you doing, Dimitri? Don't you know that I brought you here? You know your dad's a pastor. All your brothers are Christians. Don't do anything to this man. Tell some soldiers to protect him from the police. Give him his passport back. If you won't do this, I will punish you harshly. When he said he'd punish me, I turned to see who was speaking to me. But there was no one there. When I saw there was no one there, I began to shake. And who's speaking to me? But the voice kept speaking in my ear. Give me his passport or I'll punish you. I was embarrassed. I shook before the missionary. So I went into another compartment. And I stuck my fingers in my ears not to hear the voice anymore. But it got louder. Go, if you won't, I will punish you now. Give me his passport. Tell some men to protect him from the police. I went shaking before the missionary. I said, Mr. Digg, your God has answered your prayers. He sent his angel and he spoke into my ear. I will do nothing to you. I'll even tell some men to protect you from the police. Brothers, as I gave him the passport, the voice stopped. And I began to feel a new peace in my heart. I knew it was the voice of the angel of God. But don't you ever hear God's voice? When sin stands before you, when you see you're doing something you're not supposed to, doesn't something inside of you say it's not good, don't do it? Doesn't it? You know, this is the voice of the angel of God. He tells you not to do evil. But see, then the devil comes. Hey, look, you can sin. David sinned. He was still king. God forgave him. Brothers, let's not deceive ourselves. David was a king. He was under the law. And in the old days, you could sacrifice animals for your sins. But for our sins, there was Christ who died. And through His wounds were healed. And through His blood were cleansed of all sin. Amen. Am avut un meeting la Mormoni. We had a meeting with the Mormons in Utah. In Utah. 
Vreau să vă spun ca să nu vă las nespus. I'd like to tell you a bit about it so that you know you won't be. Sunt mormoni. But you know how Mormons are. Au fost atâta popor că nu pot să nume. And there were so many people in there. Și când am început să le spun. And I began to speak to them. Voi credeți în cartea lui Mormon? You guys believe in the book of Mormon. Voi credeți în cartea lui Joseph Smith. And in the book of Joseph Smith. Dar în cartea aceasta voi nu credeți. But you're deceived. You should believe in this book. Adevărata carte. The only true book. Care ne poate duce în fericire. Nu-i cartea lui Mormon. You know, it's not the book of Mormon. Nu-i cartea lui Joseph Smith. And it's not the book of Joseph Smith. Nu-i cartea lui Dudumar. It's not the book of Dudumar. Adevărata carte e Biblia. The only true book is the Bible. Trebuie să se întâmplă picioare. All the Mormons stood up and they began to yell hallelujah. But I had no idea what was happening. At the end I found out all of them saw an angel of the Lord coming down so that they understand what we say is from the Spirit of God. And God brought out many people from among them. And I pray God work among your hearts too. You know the Mormons accepted us very well. But then they began to hate us because so many people were excommunicated. Still, they saw the power of God. You know, I pray that you feel the power of God, not see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Asat fratilor. Brothers, I was on the Black Sea for two and a half years. Very many missionaries came through. You know, they would tell one another. And so I would help them all. I was full of joy now. I knew that I was doing something for God. You know, I felt this joy in my heart. You know, I knew I was helping someone take in the word of God. But after two and a half years, they began to persecute the Christians. The communist government ordered all Christian children, no matter what rank, to go home. I had to go home also. But I was very sad. I went with the thought of taking revenge on my parents. Because they were Christians, I lost my job. My mother saw that I was sad. So she said, what's wrong with you, son? Why are you so sad? I said, well, because you're Christians, they kicked me out of the army. Where's dad at? He's in church. Well, then I'll go embarrass him there, I said. She said, wait, don't go, he'll be home soon. But I said, no, I'm going there. When I got to the door of the church, they were singing such a beautiful song, like you guys sang this morning. But I'll never forget this one song. I'll tell you a verse of it. Long ago he came from above, the good shepherd Jesus Christ, and he traveled throughout the world looking for lost sheep. I thought, I'm the lost sheep. I ran away from home. And Christ found me on the Black Sea. I began to cry, brothers. I felt something knocking at my heart. I would like you to feel the same. The hammer of the Holy Spirit. You know, I was crying and I couldn't stop. I wet three handkerchiefs. I was embarrassed how I was crying. I'm a man. I looked in the church to see who else was crying. Only my dad was because he was happy he saw me in church. So I go to him and I said, Dad, why am I crying. He said, I'll tell you at the end of the service. At the end, he asked me to stand. And he said, Dimitri, are you really sorry to kick you out? I said, yes, I am, Dad. Then he said, look, brothers, the answer to our prayers. We have been praying for two years that he be kicked out. Then he said, God needs officers in his army also. Now you must come to God's son. I said, I will, Dad, but let me get married first. He said, good, Mary, go from our church. I said, can't from here, they're all poor. So he said, go find a rich one, just come to God. Well, I went and I found Maria, brothers. Maria was an orphan, she was poorer than those in the church. But she was very beautiful. And I liked her a lot, so I said, if you come to God, I will marry you.
I married her when she was 17 years old. And it's been 37 years. Two days ago is our 37th anniversary. Hallelujah! Fratelor, I married Maria. We began to go to church. We committed ourselves to God. We prayed for a long time until we received the power of God. After receiving the power of God, I began to preach the gospel. I went through many churches. And in our country, there are very many churches. But in those times, the churches were underground. We'd gather and we'd put pillows in the windows. We'd lock all the doors. Many times in basements. In the forest. And we'd pray to God. We'd have communion. And we were full of the Holy Spirit. And God would strengthen us. And He'd keep bringing new people into the kingdom of God. Traveling through churches, I saw there were no Bibles. I I would ask the pastors, why don't you have any Bibles? While I was on the Black Sea, many Bibles came in. And the pastors would say, brother, the Bibles came in through communist hands. The communists sold them to us. The next day they sent the police and the police confiscated them. And we still left without any Bibles. When I heard this, I went and spoke to my family. And once again, I went to the Black Sea. I went to the chief of the shipyard and I said, chief, I have gotten married. I have no job. Please give me a job here. But I have no jobs for Christians. But sir, what do I do? I came here to marine school. Said, Let me be a trash cleaner around here at least. He said, but Dumitru, I could not see you with the broom in your hand. Then what do I do, sir? He said, hold on a minute. Do you know how to cook? Oh yes, I do. Then go cook in the cafeteria. I will pay you very well. That's where I had to be, brothers. I didn't go because I had no money. My father was a wealthy man. But I went to be able to meet the missionaries. Because missionaries never left their exact address. And so I cooked for two months. That's where I learned how to suffer. Because everyone will mistreat me there. But I say, suffer, Dimitri. Christ suffered much more than you. Well, after two months, I heard the same voices from the ship. Dimitri ran to the pier of the ship. Dig is coming in. I ran to the pier. And the first man who got out was Brother Dig. From far away I said, Peace of God unto you, Brother Dig. Because the Romanian Christian greeting is Peace of God unto you. The American Christian greeting, Hi and Bye. Well, when Brother Dig saw me in civilian clothing, he began to cry. He didn't know what had happened to me. So he said, let's meet in the second hotel in Constanza. Because we Romanians were not allowed to talk to foreigners. If I was caught speaking to him, I'd have about six months of jail. I went to the hotel there we prayed together and together we left for Bucharest there we found brother Andrew brother Harlan Popov brother Richard Wurmbrandt and other brothers we made a strong pact they would bring the Bibles into Romania and I would give them to the churches and within about three years most of our churches had Bibles 
Bisericile se rugau pentru noi. The churches continued to pray for us. Dumnezeu ne păzea. And God protected us all the time. Era dat un decret de lege la noi în România. They had just passed a new law in Romania. Toți care vor fi prinși, care au legătură cu străini. All of those caught having contact with foreigners. Sau dă Biblie la alții. Or giving Bibles to other people. 25 de ani de închisoare. 25 years of jail. Și confiscarea averii. And the confiscation of all material wealth. Tot timpul eram cu viața la risc. So your life was always in danger. Dar aveam credință că Dumnezeu ne păzea. But we had faith that God would protect us. După trei ani de zile, after three years, Dumnezeu a ascultat rugăciunea bisericilor. God heard the prayer of the church. A trimis o ploaie puternică peste România în 1970. And in 1970, after they closed the borders, God sent intense rain. Așa ploaie a fost jumătate din țară a fost în apă. It rained so hard that over half the country was flooded. Când guvernul comunist a văzut atâta patru, when the communist government saw so many losses, au cerut ajutor occidental. They asked for the foreigner self. Au deschis granița. They reopened the borders. Și au început să vină Biblie liberă. And Bibles started coming in freely. Patru ani au venit liberi Biblie. For four years, Bibles came in freely. Dar frații nu mai aveau Biblie românești. But the brothers had no more Romanian Bibles. Au trimis foarte multe Biblie ruse. So they sent over many Russian Bibles. Eu am locuit la 18 km de granița rusată. I lived only about 18 km away from the Russian border. Am făcut mari depozite de Biblie. And so I hid a lot of Bibles everywhere. Nu mai știam unde să le mai pun. I didn't know where to hide them at anymore. Căutam să le trec dincolo. I tried to take them over. Dar nu puteam. But I just couldn't. Și am venit acasă foarte supărat. I came home very sad. Că mă urmărea poliția. The police began to follow me. Și când m-a văzut tata galben la față. Oh, my dad saw my face pale. Băi, Dumitru, tu ești bolnav? He said, Dumitru, are you sick? Zic, nu. I said, no. Dar și ești galben, băi, la față. Then why is your face so pale, son? Tata, am atâtea Biblie rusăști. Well, dad, I have so many Russian Bibles. Nu mai știu unii să le pun. I have no idea where to have them anymore. Am tăutat să le trec dincolo și n-am putut. I keep trying to take them over, but I just can't. Ai vrut tu, băi? He said, you tried to? Zic, da, eu. I said, yeah, me. Băi, tu te-ai rugat? Did you pray first? Zic, nu. Well, no. Ai postit, băi? Did you fast? Zic nu. Well, no. Ai întrebat de Dumnezeu? Did you ask God about this? Zic nu. Well, no. Te bezui pe tine, băi, de ce n-ai dus? You trusted yourself, that's why you couldn't take him over. Ia hai, băi, să ne unim să postim. Let's unite and fast. Să ne rugăm lui Dumnezeu. Let's pray to God. Și să vină Dumnezeu să-ți arăt. And God will come and show you a way. Fraților, ca azi ne-am hotărât. Brothers, we decided that day. Și sara nu eram adornit bine. And that night, I wasn't fully asleep. Și odată am simțit o mână în scoală, Dumnezeu. And I felt a hand wake up, Dumitri. Am sărit drept în picioare. I jumped up. La capul patului meu. And at the head of my bed. Era un om îmbrăcat într-o haină albă. There was a man dressed in a white robe. Și eu când l-am văzut, am început să tremur. When I saw him, I began to shake. M-am uitat la ușă, zic, până a intrat. I looked at the door, you know, how did he get in? Ușa încuiată, geamurile închise. Door was locked, windows closed. Cine e ăsta, până a intrat? Who is he? How did he get into my house? Dumitru, nu te teme, zice. He says, Dumitru, don't be afraid. Vrei să duci Biblie la ruși? Do you want to take Bibles into Russia? Zic, da, 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 vreau. Yes, I do. Ia un creu și scrie. Well, take a pen and write this down. Nu puteam scrie de frică, așa tremuram. I couldn't write, I was shaking so hard. Mi-au spus loc unde să mă duc. Gave me the address. They were supposed to talk to me. Told me what to say. They said, "I'll be there before you." When the man will ask you what you want, tell him you were sent by the one who was just there. And he'll tell you how to take the Bibles into Russia. Ante timp ce eu am început să mă îmbrac, While I started getting dressed, a dispărut omul. The man disappeared. Am fugit la ușă, am căutat ușa. I ran to the door, I looked blocked. Geamurile închise. Windows shut. Doamne, zic ce asta. Dear Lord, what has this been? Că când vine o ființă cerească, frate, ești ca un om pierdut. When you hear when you see a heavenly being, you're completely lost. Nu că mai ai timp să-l fotografiezi. No, like, not like some say, you know, I'll take Numai a picture. Numai frați americani îi fotografiază. Maybe some American brothers want take want to take pictures. <laughs> Am fugit fuga la tata. I ran to my dad's house. Tata, uite ce am văzut eu. Dad, look what I saw. Bă, zice, du-te că noi ne rugăm. He said, go, I'll wake up the others and we'll pray. Și am plecat, era ceasul aproape, și a fost două și până apă. I left, it was about midnight. Am ajuns dimineața la ora 8. And I got there at 8 in the morning. Era o gară pe graniță. There was a train station on the border. Acolo trebuie să facă vama la vagoane. And there they checked all the trains. Și schimbau osile la vagoane. And changed the train axles. Că linia ferată la roșii e melată ca la români. Because the train lanes in Russia are wider than in Romania. Că ne intrat trenul din România la roșii. And so when the train had got tried to go from Romania to Russia. Trebuie să schimbi osile la vagoane. They had to change the axles. Și în timp ce ei schimba la unele trenuri osile la vagoane. And while they changed the axles. Noi în alte trenuri bagam Biblie în vagoane. We could have put the Bibles in the train. M-a dus la șeful gării și am bătut la ușă. I went to the chief and I knocked on the door. El a ieșit tremurând. But the man came out shaking. Și cu dumneata. What do you want? Îți sunt trimis de cel ce a fost acum la tine. I was sent by the one who was just here, I said. Când i-a zis, băi, tare a început să tremur. But when I said this, he began to shake even more. Ce, 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 
Zic, vreau să duc Biblie la Rus. I want to take Bibles to Russia. M-a chemat înăuntru. He called me inside. M-a învățat cum să aduc Biblie. Taught me how to bring the Bibles. Unde se pun Biblie? Where to put the Bibles? Și cum să le băgăm în vagon? And how to load them into the train. Într-o perioadă de 15 ani. And within about 15 years. Peste 300 de mii de Biblie trecu la Rus. We took over 300,000 Bibles into Russia. La fara de literatură. Dar nu eu, fraților. But it wasn't me, brothers. Nu am vrut. Nor Andrew. A fost direct mâna lui Dumnezeu. It was the hand of God directly. După 15 ani, prin frații din orașul Chișinău, After 15 years, the brothers in the city called Chișinău. Eu prins când Biblie din Baguan. Were caught unloading the Bibles. Și au arestat în 1980. And they were arrested in 1980. Nici acum nu i-au eliberat. They haven't been freed as of yet. Am trei săptămâni de când am venit din România. It's been three weeks since I returned from Romania. Și am fost în... Au fost niște pastori din... Russia, and some pastors from Russia came over. And I gave them some clothing and food because I'd gone over with two containers. And I asked, have those brothers been freed from prison yet? And they said, no, they're still in prison. Their families were taken out forcefully to a place called the Black Valley. It's between the city of Chisinau and Odessa. And they're still there, brothers. Noi când am auzit eu împreună cu fratele Bernard din Olanda, When we heard about this, me and a brother Bernard from Holland, am plecat la Chișinău. Went to Chișinău. Dar nimeni nu a știut că unii sunt familie. But no one knew where the families were. Ne-am strâns 80 de frați într-un bec. And so 80 brothers gathered in a basement. Trei zile și trei nopți am făcut postul Estera. For three days and three nights we fasted Esther's fast. Nimeni nu a mâncat. No one ate. Nimeni nu a băut. No one drank. Nimeni nu a dormit. No one slept. Nu m-am rugat și am lăudat pe Dumnezeu. All we did was pray and praise God's name. Până a venit îngerul Domnului. Until the angel of God came. Au zis He said, find the car. I will be on the hood of the car. And I'll take you to the families. Brothers, we got there the next morning at 2 a.m. When we got there, they were all on their knees praying to God. Little children praying to God. Dar cea mai mare surpriză a fost pentru mine. But the greatest surprise that I've ever era had. Era preoți catolici. Was that I saw Catholic era priests. Era ortodoxi. Orthodox era priests. Era metodiști. Methodists. Era pentecostali. Pentecostals. Era baptiști. Baptists. Creștini după Evanghelie. Jehovah's Witnesses even. Și toți se rugau celui aș Dumnezeu. But all of them praying to the same God. Toți strigau cu același glas către Dumnezeu. All crying out for God to help them. Nu era niciun gard între ei. No more denominational fences. Acolo toți aveau libertatea aceasta. All of them had this great freedom there. Haleluia! Ne-am întors repede la Chișinău, fraților. We came back into the city. Ca să putem găsi frații tot acolo. And the brothers were still there praying. I-am găsit pe frații tot adunat. They were all gathered. Ei au făcut o strângere de bani. We went and we collected money. A doua zi au cumpărat tot ce a trebuit pentru a cei de acolo. And that morning we bought everything they needed. Le-au luat și corturi. We bought them tents, food, clothing. Și am încărcat două mașini. We loaded two cars. Și am luat-o spre Valea Neagră. And we left for the Black Valley. După noi venea poliția. The police was following us from behind. Când magazinele rusești, când cumpăr marfă multă. When you buy too much stuff in a Russian store. Gestionarul anunță poliția. The clerks let the police know. Și s-au luat după noi, frate. And so they began to follow us. Era gata să ne ajungă. They were ready to catch us. Noi eram foarte disperat. You know, we were despaired at this moment. Dumnezeule. 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 We kept crying out, Lord. Tu ne-ai arătat unii să-i găsim. You showed us where to find them. Fiți milă de copiii cei din Valea Neagră. Have mercy on those children. Let us get there. Don't let them catch us. Și când aproape să ne ajungă, And when we thought we had to stop, am văzut că Dumnezeu a ridicat un nor de plaie. God just raised a rain cloud. Peste noi o ploat, Over us, it sprinkled. Dar peste ei a bătut o gheață așa. But over them there was ice about this big. Ei au spart parbizurile. It cracked their windshields. Și au mai venit după noi. And they follow us anymore. Și noi am ajuns cu bine în Valea And so we got to the Black Valley with no problem. Așa lucrează Dumnezeu. That is how God works. Când ne-am întors din Valea Neagră, Upon a return from the Black Valley, at the entrance of the city, the police was checking every car. They found me without a passport, and they arrested me. They put me in the Russian jail in Chisinau. They kept me there until the Romanians called me home. The Russians never beat me. They just kept trying to, you know, make fun of me. 
M-a dat în România. Well, they took me into Romania. Când am ajuns în România, casa mea era înconjurată de poliție. When I got home, my house was surrounded by the police. Nevasta o ținea cu fața la pereți. They were holding my wife with her face against the wall. Fata cu fața la pereți. My daughter with her face against the wall. Mine m-a legat și m-a pus cu fața la pereți. They tied me and put me with my face against the wall. O veni cu tot felul de aparate. They'd come with all kinds of equipment. Căuta Biblie. They were looking for Bibles. Avem foarte multe Biblie acasă. I had very many Bibles at my house. Credeam că ar să le găsesc. I thought they'd find them. Au început controlul dimineața la ora 8. They began to check the house at 8 in the morning. And they finished at 4 in the evening. At 4, a colonel came to me. Dimitri, please, please turn around. Where do you have your Bibles at? I asked, did you find them? Look, because I really thought they'd found them. No, we didn't find anything. Well then, sir, if you didn't find them, I don't have them, I said. But you know, God had broken their equipment and he blinded their eyes. Because they walked right over no, the Bible, but they couldn't see him. But I don't have Well, where are the Bibles at? But what Bible, sir? I don't have a Bible press. They said, oh, don't worry, you'll tell us which way it is a child even. They put me in the crown, they took me to the police station. And that's where all the tortures began. For five months, they tortured me. But I'll only tell you a few of them. And if you want to know more, it's in the book. <coughs> At first they asked me to confess. Tell them where I had the Bibles from. Where I have them at. How I took them into Russia. And who helped me take them. But in my ear there was still that same voice. Dumitru, don't tell. Dumitru, I will save you. Dumitru, I am with you. Fraților, și dacă eu spuneam, Brothers, if I would have told, eu n-am cărat Bibliele sânge. You know, I didn't take the Bibles in by myself. Poate m-au ajutat sute de frați. Hundreds of brothers helped me all the time. Și dacă eu îi spuneam, rămânea familie muritoare de foame. And if I would have told, their families would have been left starving. Și am zis că mai bine să mor eu. And I thought, you know, better that I die. Dar să n-arăt pe nimeni. But I won't tell anyone. Și lucrarea lui Dumnezeu va merge mai departe. And the work of God will continue. O văzut că nu spun nimica. They saw I wasn't saying anything. O dus într-o cameră foarte întunecată. They took me into a very dark room. Așa întuneric era că nu puteam să găsesc pereți. It was so dark I couldn't see the walls. Aici stai zice până ai să spui. They said you'll be in here until you confess. O închis ușa și o plecat. They locked the door and the police left. Și odată aud că trage cineva un ușor. And then I began to hear somebody open a door. I thought to myself, what sort of traps could they have in here? I was afraid to step now, maybe I'd, you know, fall into something. But all of a sudden I hear a squeak, like a rat squeak. And I thought to myself, could they have any animals in here? And then I felt them crawl up my leg. When I touched one, it was a rat about this big. I'd take one or two off, maybe ten would crawl back on. I was so terrified that I yelled as loud as I could. God, don't let me down. When I said this, an intense light appeared. And out of the light, I heard a voice. Dumitru, don't be afraid. I am with you. Look at me. When I raised my head to look, the light was so intense that it threw me on the ground. He said, I told you to look at me. I said, who are you? I am the angel Gabriel, the messenger of heaven. I have come to help you. Look at me. This time I was able to see him. Within the light there was a man dressed in shining clothes. He had a thick belt over his waist. And he said he had a helmet. And in his right hand he had a sword. And the sword kept spewing fire. And he said, Dumitru, don't be afraid. You will go through many trials. But I will be with you. I'll take you out of their hands. And I'll take you into America. Look down, he said. When I looked down, brothers, the whole room was full of dead rats. They used to raise the rats underneath the room. And when someone wouldn't confess, they'd let the rats out. And out of fear, you'd tell things that you didn't even know. But the angel of God came to my aid.
of my eyes. După ce a plecat îngerul, the angel disappeared. Eu mai tare m-am speriat. I got even more scared. Doamne, m-a dat să mă mănânce și o bolan. Dear Lord, they intended these rats to eat me. A venit un polițar, au deschis ușa. A policeman came and he opened the door. Băi, tu mai trăiești? Hey, he's still alive in there. Da, m-a dat să mă mănânce și o bolan. I said, yeah, did you try to have me dinner for the rats? Atunci au aprins lumina. Then he turned on the light. Când au văzut șobolanii morți. And when he saw all the rats dead. S-au repezit la mine, nu știu cu ce m-a lovit în cap. He came and he hit me over the head. Că eu am căzut jos. I fell down. Mi-a omorât copiii, te omor și eu. He said you killed my children, now I'm going to kill you. M-a tras de picioare afară. He pulled me out by the feet. M-a scos pantofii din picioare. Took my shoes off. M-a dus într-o celulă foarte îngustă. And took me into a very tight cell. Mergea un râu de apă răce. A cold river of water went underneath. Avea deasupra grăte de fer. And over it they had iron bars. De sus picura apă drept în vârful capului. And cold water dripped on my head from the ceiling. Și părăți avea cui ascuțit. And so that I couldn't lean the wall and shut sharp spikes. Aici stai până ai să spui. You'll be here until you confess, he said. Cât am stat, nu știu, fraților. I don't know how long I was in there for. Picioarele mi s-au umflat. But my legs were all swollen. Capul nu-l mai sămța. I couldn't move my head anymore. O vint un polițar, au deschis ușa. And a policeman came and opened the door. Eu am căzut jos. I just fell. Ei m-au tras afară de acolo. They pulled me out. Și cu picioarele tale. I said, what's wrong with your feet? Se frila picioare. How you must be cold. It's okay, we'll heat you up. They pulled me into another room. They tied me by the waist. They pulled me up. And with rubber hoses, they beat my feet. They'd let me get better, throw water on me, and again asked me to confess. They'd stick my hand in the door and poke me with pins under my fingernails. Or they'd lay me face flat, put a board over me, and five or six policemen beat on the board with bats until blood would get shot my nose and my mouth. Again, they throw water on me and ask me to confess. As I said, it lasted for five months. După cinci luni de zile, After five months, au văzut că n-am spus nimic. They saw I hadn't said anything. M-au dus într-o altă cameră. They took me into a room. Acolo era un scaun de o să bide. There they had an unusual chair. Băi, Dumitru, tu vezi scaunul ăsta? Well, Dumitru, do you see this chair? Da, îl văd. Yes, I do. L-am adus din Germania pentru tine. Well, we brought this from Germany, especially for you. Spune, băi, că acolo mori. Tell us, or you will die on it. Chiar dacă mor, n-am ce să spun. Well, even if I die, I have nothing to tell you, sir. M-a luat și m-a legat de scaun. Well, they tied me on the chair. Cu mâinile la spate de scaun. Tied my hands on it. M-a legat de picioare roate. Tied my feet around it. Mi-a pus un aparat subtel. They placed something under my feet. Mi-a legat un aparat în dreptul inimii. Tied something over my heart. În cap mi-a pus un aparat și într-o ureche și în altă. They stuck a bowl on my head and plugged through things in my ears. Acum gândește-te bine ce ai făcut că mor. And they said, I think what you did, you're about to die. Și când o băgat în priză, fraților, Oi, că n-am mai văzut deloc. I couldn't see my eyes anymore at all. Eu credeam că gata să mor. Oh, and I thought I'm gonna die. Iar am văzut aceeași lumină. Once again, the same light appeared. Era același bărbat. It was the same man. Dumitru, nu te teme. Dumitru, don't be afraid. Dumitru, tu nu vei muri. Dumitru, you will not die. Strigă sângele lui Isus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Am început să strig sângele lui Isus, sângele lui Isus. I began to say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Cât am strigat nu? I don't know how long I said it for. Și au făcut cu mine nu știu. I don't know what he did with me. Când m-am trezit, m-am trezit eram jos. But when I woke up, I woke up laying down. Eram plin de My face was full of blood. They were throwing water and slapping me around. Băi, tu știi că acum tu ai spus tot? Well, now you've told us everything. Aparatele noastre au înregistrat gândul tău. Our equipment recorded everything you said. Ia să te asculți. Listen to yourself. Și când au dat drumul la aparate, And when you turned their equipment, Ne-am auzit vocea mea. I did hear my voice. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Nu eu am fost puternic, fraților. Sângele lui Hristos a biruit. It was the blood of, blood of Jesus that was victorious. De ce ai zis, băi, așa? Now, why'd you say this? Pentru că vrei să mă omor. Because you want to kill me. Tot eu omor, băi. Oh, we'll still kill you. A doua zi o adus-o pe Maria. And so the next day they brought Maria. O pus-o într-o cameră ca să aud eu că ea e acolo. They put her in the room next to me so that I hear she was there. Maria. Maria. Dumitru a spus tot, băi. Dumitru has confessed. Te-am adus pe tine să scrii și tu aici. We brought you so that, you know, we know that he told the truth. Scrii unul, cine a adus Biblia? Tell us who brought him the Bibles. Unii are Biblia. Where he has the mat. Pe unii le-au dus la ruși. How he took him to Russia. Cine l-au ajutat să le duc. And who helped him take him. Îi dau drumul lui Dumitru. And we'll let Dumitru go. Maria, Dumnezeu nu a lăsat-o pe Maria. But God wouldn't let Maria tell. 
Dacă a spus Dumitru știe She said that to told you he knows. Dar eu nu știu. But I know nothing about it. Ei s-au repezit la Maria să ia la bătaie. They went to Maria and they began to hit her. Maria s-a speriat, o căzut Maria în coamă. got scared and she fainted. Ei au pus o pe mâini și au dus-o acasă. They took her in their arms and they took her home. Vine la mine. And they came to me. Băi, tu ai auzit că o Maria ta aici? Did you hear your wife was here? Zic, da, m-au auzit că ați bătut-o. I said, yeah, I heard how you beat her. Băi, ea a spus tot. Well, she told us everything. And we took her home. Spune și tu și te duc și pe tine. You tell us too, we'll take you home also. Dacă spus ea știe, dar eu nu știu. Well, if she told you, she knows, but I know nothing about it. Oh, ați fost sfătuiți. Oh, he had all this planned out. Și din nou m-au pus pe scaunele. And again, they put me on the chair. Bă, de data asta te ar. I said, this time I'll kill you. O băga curentul mai putea. He turned the power on even higher. Și când credeam că gata, a făcut același lucru cu mine. They're the same exact thing. Și când credeam că gata, mor. And I thought this time I'd have to die. Iar am văzut aceeași lucru. Once again, the same light appeared. Era același înger. It was the same angel. Dumitru, nu te tem. Dumitru, do not be afraid. Tu nu vei muri. You will not die. Mai de trecut prin tot tortură puternică. You'll go through one more intense torture. Și te scot din mâna lor. And I'll take out of their hands. Vrăjmașul tău va muri. Your enemy will die. Strâgă sângele lui Iisus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Iar am început să strâng. Again, I began to say it. Nu mai știu ce s-a făcut cu mine. I don't know what else happened. Când m-am trezit, m-am trezit la fel. When I woke up, I woke up the same way, laying down. They were still slapping me around and throwing water on me. They said, now you have to have confessed. When they turned on their equipment, once again I heard my voice. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Amen. So I'm furious at it. Tare foarte mult colonelul care m-a închitat. The colonel that was in charge of my case got very mad. Pe telefon, He picked up the phone. O chema șase polițari, frate. He called up six policemen. Eu atât am auzit, o morut să-l băi. All I heard was, kill him. O sări cu picioarele pe mine. They jumped on me with their boots. Așa de tare m-au farmat. They crushed me so hard. Am avut nouă coaste plăsnite. That nine ribs were broken. Am căzut în coma. I fell into a coma. Ce-au făcut cu mine în nou? I have no idea what he did with me. Eu când m-am trezit, un doctor îmi făcea ejecții în mâna dreapta. But when I woke up, a doctor was giving me a shot in the right hand. Spunea că Dumnezeu tot Dumitru ți-o mai dat viață. But he kept saying, Dumitru, your God still let you live. În perioada aceea a venit repede fuga, a venit un... O ofițer și-a străgat, hai, domn doctor, că moare colonialul. At this time, an officer ran in and he said, hurry, doctor, the colonel, he's dying. Doctorul m-a lăsat pe mine și-a plecat după ofițer. The doctor left me and ran after the officer. Și eu eram curios ce s-a întâmplat. And now I was curious to see what had happened. Cam după o jumătate de oră, In about half an hour, a venit un alt colonel. Another colonel came. Dar cu o voce blândă. But this time with a humble voice. Dumitru, ce faci tu? Poți să te îmbraci? Dumitru, how are you? Can you get dressed? Da, de ce să mă îmbrac? Why should I get dressed? Ce merge acasă? You're going home. The gas terminal is overrun. So he finished killing me already. By Dumnezeu, tot s-a făcut dreptat. This is God's giving you justice. Colonel Preston, you're going to Colonel Preston, you're dead. Commander, the doctor said to take you home. And the chief ordered me to take you home quickly. The doctor, how did he die? I said, how did he die? The chief ordered me to take you home quickly. He had your papers in his hand. He had internal hemorrhage. Fell down and died. When the doctor arrived, he was dead. He was already dead when the doctor got there. And the chief said to take you home quickly. Then he said, "Don't pray to your God and punish me too." Then he said, "Don't pray to your God and punish me too." Because you know that I never did anything to you. Because you know that I never did anything to you. Because you know that I never did anything to you. Because you know that I never did anything to you. Because you know that I never did anything to you. O mai chemat pe un ofițer. They called in another officer. M-am îmbrăcat, m-au pus în mașină și m-au dus acasă. They dressed me, put me in the car and they took me home. Când am ajuns acasă, fraților. When I got home, brothers. Nici nevasta nu mă cunoștea așa distrusă. My wife didn't even know me anymore. That's how destroyed I was. Nu putea să stau nici în picioare. I couldn't stand up. Nici pe o parte, nici pe alta. I couldn't lay down on one side or the other. M-au luat frații pe mâini. The brothers took me on their arms. Nevasta mi-a făcut un pat cu pen și m-au băgat în picioare. My wife filled the bed with pillows and they put me in the pillows. Acolo am stat trei luni zile. And that's where I stayed for three months. Frații se rugau la patul meu tot. The brothers prayed around my bed. Missionaries came from all over the world. They just took pictures and left. And I'd say, God, just kill me. Please take my life. After a while, my flesh began to smell. I said, Dear God, there's no more hope. You know, I'm starting to rot alive. And after three months of suffering, when I thought there were no, no, there was Era no more hope. Târziu. It was very late at night. Familia mea dormea. My family was asleep. So a prins aceeași lumină din închisoare. And the same night as in the prison appeared in my room. Bărbat. And the same man spoke. Dimitri, Dimitri enough. 
get out. Am sărit din pat, fraților, I jumped out of bed. I ran outside. Mă căutam să văd dacă mă mai doare. I kept feeling myself to see if I still hurt. Nothing hurt anymore. Puteam să merg. I was able to walk. Mă mirosam. I kept smelling myself. Vedeam că nu miroase. Nothing. De ce s-a întâmplat cu mine? And what's happening to me? Am visat. Am I dreaming? E realitate. Is this actually true? Nu mi-a să cred. I could not think. M-am întors înapoi. I went back into the house. M-am dus în cameră la nevasta dormea. My wife and the family was asleep. Copii dormeau. M-am dus în cameră la mine. And then I went into my room. Am găsit pe îngerul Domnului. And I found the angel of God. Dimitri. Dimitri. Te mai doare? Do you still hurt? Zic că nu. No. Dumitri, poți să mergi? Can you walk? Zic, da, pot. I said, yes, I can. Dumitri, apucă-te de treabă. Then Dimitri, start working. Mai patru ani să cari Biblie, Dumitri. You have four more years to smuggle Bibles in. Poliția va fi pas cu pas cu tine. The police will follow you step by step. Dar eu voi fi lângă tine. But I'll be with you. Le voi închide ochii și nu te va putea prinde. I'll blind their eyes and they won't be able to catch you. Or să vadă că nu te poate prinde. When they see, they can't catch you. Scrie pe ceva. He said, write this down. Mi-a spus anul. He told me the year. Luna. The month. Ziua. The day. Că în guvernul comunist. And even the hour when the communist government would take me out of my church, out of my country, and they'd kick me out. Brothers, that's exactly how it happened. Now, brothers, I'd like to continue with the testimony. După care la urmă să vă spunem și un vis care l-am avut acum în Oregon. After which I'll also tell you about a dream that I just had in Oregon. Că când m-am întors de România, o trebuie să plec în Oregon. Because two days after I returned from Romania, I was supposed to go to Oregon. Și când se schimb clima, climat e cam sens nu bine. And when you change the climate all the time and you know jet lag, you don't feel so good. Și în Oregon plouă continuu. And in Oregon it rains a lot. Și nu puteam să dorm noaptea. And I couldn't sleep at night. Am petreceam viața pe genunchi. I'd spend all my nights on my knees in prayer. And I'd cry out before God. And I fell asleep and I had a dream. Which I will tell you at the end. And I'll also tell you about Romania. So that you may be happy together with us. After we came from Italy. As I told you this morning, we got to Sodom and Gomorrah. Which is California. We were accepted very badly. We were brought in by a Russian foundation. And they took us to an apartment where we still live. But back then the apartment was very dirty. Dogs lived there before us. The carpet had a very strong smell. There was no furniture. Not even a bed, nothing. When my wife saw this, she said, Husband, why did God bring us here? She began to cry. She said, go to other buildings. Maybe they'll let us in because we can't live here. I took a Romanian child and knew how to speak English. And I'd go to the buildings where it said for rent. The first thing that asked, you know, when I'd ask, do you want to let us in? He said, sure, but do you have children? You know, for us it was a joy. Yes, we do. Well, we don't accept people with children here. I think, dear Lord, what kind of people are these? You know, I thought all of America was Christian. All the Bibles came from America. All the missionaries came from America. And they keep dogs in their homes that they won't accept children. And I began to cry like a child. I came to I stopped crying before I got home. But Maria says, Dimitri, why have you been crying? I said, what, do you see me crying now? She says, I've been with you too long, I know when you cry. I said, well, Maria, they won't let us in, we have kids. And then she began, husband, why did God punish us? What did we do that God punished us so harshly? She began to cry. The grandkids were asleep on the suitcases. And I kept walking around the building and checking out my life. Lord, why did you punish me? I almost lost my life for you. I lost all of my wealth for you, Lord. But out of everything I had, I came out with three suitcases. Lord, what did I do that you punished me? Why did you bring me to this country? I have no money, Lord. I have no food. I don't have a bed to 
Let me hit down on. Doamne, de ce mai duci? Lord, why? Și stau pe piatra pară. I was sitting outside on a rock. Era noaptea târziu, fraților. It was very late at night. Și plângeam înaintea lui Dumnezeu. And I was just crying before God. Și deodată am văzut că vine spre mine o lumină. And then I saw a light coming towards me. Când am văzut lumina, am crezut că vine o mașină. When I saw the light, I thought it was a car. Când România și în Italia m-au urmărit cu mașina să Because in Romania and in Italy, they always try to run me over with cars. Zic că vine după mine șai. So I thought they're here too. Am sărit drept în picioare. And so I jumped up. Lumina m-a cucerit. But the light surrounded me. And out of the light, I heard the same voice. It was the same angel, which had been with me in prison, which had been at my house, which was with me in Italy. He said, Dimitri, why are you so despairing? Well, what did I do that you punished me so harshly? De ce m-ai adus tu în țara asta? Why did you bring me to this country? Zic, eu n-am un loc să-mi pleca. I don't even have a place to head down. Și Dumitru, te-am adus în țara asta, că țara asta va arde. He said, Dimitru, I brought you to this country because this country will burn. De ce m-ai adus să mă arzi aici și nu m-ai lăsat să mor în pușcării în țara mea? So why did you bring me here to burn and then let me die in jail in my own country? Dumitru, taci. He said, Dumitru, be quiet. Urcă-te lângă mine. Get beside me. N-ai voie să mai vorbesc. You're not allowed to speak from now on. M-am urcat lângă el, fraților. I got beside the angel But it traveled so fast that you couldn't see anything. He just said, "This is California. This is Las Vegas." What I have shown you is that Sodom and Gomorrah. Its sin has reached God, and God has decided to punish it through fire. In one day, it will burn. He came and showed me New York. This is New York. It is also a Sodom and Gomorrah. In one One day it will burn. He came and he showed me Florida. This is Florida, he said. This is as Sodom and Gomorrah. In one day it will burn. I said, what will you do with me, though? He said, I told you to be quiet. And he brought me back to the place we left. He said, now we talk. I brought you to this country because I love this country. I love the people in this country. And through your mouth, I want to wake up a lot of people. Well, how can you wake them through my mouth? I can't speak to anyone. Who knows me here? Who will even call me? He says, that's not your worry. I will be before you. I will do great works amongst the American people. I will prepare someone for you to speak through. But you must tell them everything that I tell you. Again he said, America will burn. I said, but how can America burn when it's so powerful? He said, remember and tell them. He said, you reach TV stations and radio stations and churches. But tell them everything I tell you. Hide nothing. America will burn. But again, how will it burn? He said, tell them this. The Russian spies found out the most powerful nuclear plants in America are. When Americans will think it's peace and quiet and everything's perfect, some groups from the inside will revolt against the government. The government will be occupied with the revolution and then from the ocean, Cuba, out of Cuba, Nicaragua, Nicaragua America Central, Central America, Mexico, Mexico and, two and two other countries that I can't remember, they will bombard the nuclear plants in America and America will burn. I said, what will you do with the church, though? He said, many churches have left me. I said, what do you mean, don't have people here? He said, tell them this. People glorify people. The honor that Christ deserves. Man takes upon himself. In the church, there's divorce. There's adultery. There's sodomy. There's abortion. And all kinds of sin. And Christ will not live in sin. Christ lives in holiness. And I brought you here. That you cry out loud. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. 
întoarcă de a păcătui. Tell them to stop sinning. Să se întoarcă către Dumnezeu. And to repent. Că Dumnezeu nu obosește iertând. Because God never stops forgiving. Și toți care se vor opri de la păcatele lor. And all those who will stop sinning. Se vor întoarce către Dumnezeu. And will repent. În ziua nenorocirii Dumnezeu îi va salva. God will save in the day of trouble. Cum poți tu să salvezi de dacă arde America? But how can He save them if America burns, though? Tu așa să le spui. He said, tell them. Cum a salvat pe cei tineri din cuptorul cu foc? As He saved the three young ones in the furnace. Ei voi salva și pe ei. That is how He will save them. Cum a salvat pe Daniel din gura lui. As He saved Daniel from the lions. Ei voi salva și pe ei. That is how He will save them. Nu mai să se întoarcă către Dumnezeu. But they must repent. Fraților, nu ne cere un lucru. Brothers, God does not ask hard things of us. We must stop sinning. Întoarceți vă către Dumnezeu. And repent. Și Dumnezeu ne va ierta. And God will live. Amen. Dacă tu ești îngerul lui Dumnezeu. I said if you are truly the angel of God. Și vrei să vorbești la americani. And you want me to say this to the Americans. Tu trebuie să ne arăți unii scrii în Biblie. You must show this written to me in the scripture. Dacă nu scrii în Biblie, eu nu pot să vorbesc. If it's not scriptural, I won't tell anyone. Îți spune, zice, spune, li se citea. He said, tell them to read. Ieremia 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. Cu versetul 8 până la 15. Verses 8 through 15. Și Apocalips capitolul 18. And Revelations chapter 18. Și lupta lui Hristos împotriva popoarelor. And the fight of Christ against the nations. Zaharia 14. Zachariah 14. Okay. I'll repeat the verses for you. Jeremiah 51, 8 through 15, Revelation chapter 18, and Zechariah chapter 14. The Jesus Christos. It says Christ Himself. With the church will stand on the mountain of olives. And from the mouth of the sword of Jesus Christ, all the nations will be destroyed. But we will have joy. We will live with Christ here on earth for 1,000 years. Christ will take us to green pastures. We will drink of the river of life. And eat of the tree of life. And we will live forever, brothers. That's what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. This is what the Holy Spirit says. Trezește-te și întoarce-te din toată inima. Be awake and repent with all of your heart. Că zil negri și zile grele vin peste tine. For dark days and days of trouble are soon coming over you. Și n-ai unii să te ascunzi, zice Domnul. And there will be no place to hide, saith the Lord. Dacă astăzi nu-ți vei pune în mintea în judecată. If today you will not begin to think about me. Și dacă nu mă vei chema din toată inima. And if you will not call upon me with all of your heart. Dacă nu vei părăsi păcatul. If you will not leave sin behind. Și nu te vei întoarce către mine. And you will not come back to me. Mâine va fi târziu, zice Domnul. Tomorrow will be too late, saith the Lord. De aceea te înștiințez. This is why I tell you. Pentru că te iubesc. Because I love you. Și vreau să-ți salvez sufletul tău. And I want to save your soul. Iisus Hristos este Domnul. Jesus Christ is Lord. Iisus Hristos a venit în trup. Jesus Christ came in body. Aleluia. Aleluia! Fraților, cu Dumnezeu nu ne judecă. Brothers, there is no way we can play with God. Dumnezeu este un foc mistuitor. God is an all-consuming fire. Eu am fost la o convenție a televizoarelor aici la Florida. I was at a convention here in Florida. În timpul războiului Hussein. It was right during the war with Hussein. Și s-a predicat Evanghelia două zile. And they preached for about two days. Dar n-am auzit de Hristos. But never once did they mention Christ. Predica numai pe Hussein. They spoke only on Hussein. Și-a ratat pe o hartă mare. They had big maps upon the walls. Că aici e Babilonul. This is where Babylon is. Că Babilonul va fi distrus. This is how it'll be destroyed. Și acolo e Armageddonul. This is going to be Armageddon. Și toate lucrurile vorbea, dar nu vorbea de Hristos. And they spoke of everything else except Christ. După două zile îmi venea rândul nii. Well, I was supposed to be the last speaker. Eu trebuia să spun că America e Babilonul. And I was supposed to say that America is Babylon. Dar vine dracul ăla. But the devil comes to me and he begins to say, "Look at what these people are saying. You know, these people are doctors, evangelists that are smarter than you. They're showing you upon the map where Babylon was, and how it will be destroyed. How can you say America is Babylon? Go home. Just hide. When they call you, don't get up. And during the hardest trouble, brothers." 
I heard my name being called. When they called me up, I was already disarmed. Because the devil fought to disarm me. I began to shake. And I said, Dear Lord, I'm empty. If you come, I will speak. If not, I'll say nothing. And as I was going up the stairs, I saw a fire coming through me. When that fire came, I wasn't myself anymore. Somebody knew there. And a voice says to me, Tell them to read. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7. And then I will interpret the verse. All right, I'll read it because I found it first. That's it. Jeremiah 51, verse 7. And it says, Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Amen? Babylon was a golden cup in God's hand. And then I asked the brothers, which God does Hussein pray to? Someone from the pew said, Mohammed. Now, how can Hussein be a golden cup in God's hand? Because he does not pray to the true God. Let's think about this. They began to look at one another. I said, brothers, the angel of God is telling me what the interpretation is. David says at one point, your word, O Lord, is more precious than pure gold. And now America was blessed of God. America had the Bible. This is the golden cup. America had missionaries. America took the Bible all over the world. And millions came to God. And America, instead of growing, it fell. Because all the Americans, you know, oh, I want to go preach in China. I want to go preach in Russia. I want to go preach in Romania. But who's preaching in America? Who is preaching in America? We just leave America like this because we have to go out. It's, the way we live is good enough, huh? We just put the Bible aside. And we live the way our heart likes. There is no way, brothers. And I asked. It says the nations drink her wine, therefore all the nations are as deranged. They want to come to Babylon. Now who wants to immigrate to Iraq? All of them said, no, not us, no. Well then, brothers. Who accepted the most immigrants in the world? America. America. If they say yes to Romania, all the communists would be here in 24 hours. You know, they see that the Bible comes from America. They see missionaries come from America. They see all the aid comes from America. They see all the blessings coming from America. They believe that in America God resurrects the dead. Same thing I believed. But when I got here, I was completely lost. Dear Lord, I thought, you know, the devil resurrected here. But it was totally opposite that. And verse 8 says this. Babylon has suddenly fallen. Then 9, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not. Forsake her, everyone. For her judgment reaches to you know, I won't go through everything because I don't want to keep you too long. But let's jump to verse 13. Oh, you who dwell by many waters, abundant in treasure, your end has come. Verse 14. Surely I will fill you with men with locusts, and they shall lift up shouts of war against you. Now, which country is Babylon? Have courage. America. It is America. Study the scriptures well. Go to Revelation 18. 
Vorbește destul de clar. And it explains so clearly. Și arată destul de la murit. And it, you know, you could see it. Așa după cum ne-a spus îngerul lui Dumnezeu. As the angel of God said. Așa se va împlini, fraților. That's how it will happen, brothers. Dar cred și am credință. But I have the faith. Că cei ce sunt numele lor e scris în cap de aveți. Those whose names are written in the book of life. Dumnezeu nu îi va lăsa. God will not let down. Dumnezeu îi va ridica. God will save. Și mă va ajunge în țara binecuvântată And we will reach the blessed land prepared for us. Vom ajunge cu Hristos acolo. Be there with Christ. We will sing the same song. We'll speak the same language. Not Romanian, but the same song, the same language. We will praise God with all of our heart. And Christ Himself will put on His belt and will serve us at the table. We, people raised in sin, have the honor of being in Christ's home. You know, how close should we be to God? God. Amen. Some of you look very scared now. But you know, don't repent out of fear. Don't repent because God will punish this country. Repent because you want your souls to be saved. But see that when the trouble comes, that's when we'll see the difference between those who worship God and those who did not. As it says, 1,000 will fall to your side and 10,000 to your right. But no one will touch you. Because God is with us. God is with us. Now that my grandson reminded me, Mike will tell you the dream from Oregon because he forgot it. As he dreamt it, he woke up, he told it to me, and I wrote it down. And we put it in the newsletter for next month. And he knows it better than I can remember it. Ah, so I get to preach. Okay, this was about a week and a half ago. We were in Oregon. It was in a hotel room, and he woke me at about four in the morning. And he said, I just had a real strong dream. And he said, it was getting very dark. And as I looked around, there were many people around me. And somehow I knew that all these people were Christians. And as it began to get darker and darker, I saw an army coming. And all of the army was dressed in black except one. And that one exception was dressed in red. And it had a sign on his forehead, and he began to speak. He said, I am Lucifer, and I've come to make war against the children of God. And all the people, you know, became scared. And then Lucifer said, who has the strength, who thinks that they can stand against me, you know, go to the left. Those of you that don't even want to fight against me, go to your right. And he said that about only 25% of the people went to the left, and all the others heard it to the right. And then Satan gave the order, attack all of those on the left, kill them. And as the army advanced and they surrounded the little group, it says that a light began to shine from heaven and it surrounded the group. And a voice said, take out your swords and defend yourselves. And one of the people in the group asked, but what swords? And the voice said, the word of the Lord is your sword. Take it out and use it. And then they began to quote scripture from the Bible and this army stopped advancing. And all of a sudden they began to sing this song. And the army got so scared that they began to run away, run away. And then Satan became very furious. And he said, attack those on the right. And one by one, those on the right, you know, were all killed. They couldn't defend themselves. And then one of the people in the little group asked, how come those people couldn't be defended as we were? And the voice said, those people were lukewarm all their lives. They, one foot in the world and one foot in the church. They never really had the word of God nor the power of God. And because of that, they could not be defended. And he said, the sun began to shine and all the black clouds began to disperse. And there was only one cloud left with Lucifer and his army on it. And Lucifer began to shake his fist at the little group. And then it disappeared. You know, and it, he said as he looked around, he saw many people that he recognized you know, in the little group that he knew as Christian brothers. Excuse him. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And he said that this strengthened him very much. You know, so that was the dream. Well, I thought about the dream that I had. And my belief is that something will soon start against the Christians. Because Lucifer was trying to take revenge on Christians so hard. And this verse is coming to pass also. When this Bible is being preached all over the world. And it even reached, penetrated the Iron Curtain in Romania at this time. For 45 years it's been persecuted. And now God has put such great grace that I couldn't explain it to you. When I came back to the airport in Bucharest uh, when I realized I was supposed to come back to America I began to cry I said Lord why must I go back I felt such intense joy there you know, God has poured such a wonderful grace the gospel is being preached everywhere in the prisons the gospel is being preached in the army I myself with my own ears heard the whole army singing our father who in heaven. They had trumpets and the troops were singing with their mouths. It was so beautiful that I ran up the hill and I met an officer and I asked him, Sir, tell me, do you have a radio that's playing Christian songs up there? He said, but sir, where have you been living? I said, right here. Then you don't know? We've been given a new law. Young and old, soldier and prisoner we must all recognize God because 45 years have been the enemies of God and our country is starving to death but now we want to recognize God that God may once again pour his blessings over Romania I began to cry brothers with so intense joy they came to our Pentecostal church they picked, you know, intelligent brothers with college. And the government is paying them to teach the children in the schools. And in the army. You know, can you realize the awesome grace God has given? And in America. No faith in the schools. We're not even talking about the army. In the army now I'm hearing they want to live in homosexuals. But not that they want to let in religion. And we see that America has left the Holy God. It has left the God of Heaven in whom they trusted before who blessed America so much. And now America instead of growing more is falling. And because of this, the wrath of God will come over this country. Now I'd like to tell you what we do. When I first came here, I traveled with Brother Andrew for two and a half years. After two and a half years, I began to feel an urge in my heart. I had very many close brothers in Yugoslavia, in Italy, in Bulgaria, in refugee camps who had escaped out of Ceausescu's prisons. And open doors wanted to help us bring them out. They said, we'll try as hard as we can. Well, I went to the American government that they accept us to have a mission. The government, sure, sure why not? And so until now, we brought out 300 families with the help of God and with the help and the prayers of the American brothers. You know, there were some that were with us all the time. And today, they're still with me. But brothers, you should know, I've never asked anyone for anything. You know, we, in our apartment that we live in, two bedrooms, we brought in Romanian families. 
because I don't have money to pay for their rent. And I'd open the door at night because there was no more air. And I sit on my knees before God. And I knew a pastor in Indiana. I said, Lord, if you're still with me, put it on his heart to send me the money for these people's rent. The next morning, brothers, I got a phone call. Mike, is your grandpa home? Home. Yes, he is. Well, he's been troubling me all night. I dreamt that he kept saying I need money for these people's rent. He said, tell him the check's in the mail. But what I want to tell you is God works. You know, God is never late. He's helped us without ever asking anyone for a penny. But we ask you for your prayers for us. Please pray for the work that we do. And also pray that God give us strength to continue and take the message of God throughout America that the church of God may wake up. May the Lord bless you and may He fill you with His Holy Spirit and may He change your lives that next time we meet we find you full of the Holy Spirit and I pray that this church God will fill with prophets God will fill with people who have visions God will pour all his gifts over you that you may grow in fear of God may God be with you and with us Amen